overall, I don't actually think there is one absolutely immaculate standout food that is better than everything, that is perfectly balanced, that has got the perfect ingredients. Every product has its ups and downs. Every product has fillers in it. It's unavoidable. Hey fish keepers, Cam here from thefishroom.co.nz and in today's video we're going to be talking about fish food but on a slightly different angle than what most other people talk about when they're talking about fish food. So we all obviously know what fish food is but I think some of us as hobbyists get kind of confused on what a good fish food is to a bad fish food. Uh, breaking down ingredients, breaking down nutritional information and all that kind of stuff and what fish actually need to consume to make them healthy to get them to thrive. So in this video we're going to discuss a few things like that. So the absolutely most important thing in a fish food is your fish eating it. If your fish don't eat it then it's just not worth anything regardless. Some fish will eat one food and not another and vice versa. So that's the first premise that we need to worry about. Is your fish going to eat it? Once we've ticked that off we can go through everything else that's important in a fish food. So here is my hot take when it comes to fish food. I believe that we should be feeding our fish more food that they are more likely to be consuming in the wild. That means insects, that means worms, uh, that means little crustaceans and stuff like that, as opposed to fish food that is full of fish meal, herring meal, squid, etc, etc. I think there is definitely a big uptake on foods coming through with insects in it, which I think is a fantastic thing and I think the fish are beginning to respond accordingly when people are feeding things like this range here. So we all know that protein is a really essential part of human diets and fish diets, but I think what we don't kind of discuss is the lack of need of carbohydrates in fish diets. They don't have the same uh, brain function as what us humans do, they don't need the carbs. So the fish food that we feed them needs to be higher in protein than anything else. Um, so a really good way of actually working this out is looking at the back of the container of your food. So all fish food will give you this little breakdown on the back here. The idea of what you're wanting to look for is if you add all these numbers up, the magic number is 70. If you can get these numbers to 70 and above, that is a high protein, decent uh, aquarium food to be feeding. Anything lower than that, and it's generally speaking that it's been filled up with fillers and filled up with carbohydrates that your fish aren't going to use. Um, so yeah, the magic number 70, anything above that is really good. So as an example here, um, this insectrum here, add these numbers up at 79.8%, which is phenomenally good. Uh, the new life spectrum, unfortunately, because it's got such a really good ingredient list, is only sitting at 60. Um, and the fish science worm palette here is sitting at 71. So all of these are worm or insect based foods, but clearly not all of them are the same when you're beginning to break up their nutritional breakdowns. So the first thing most people look for when they are buying food is what's actually in the ingredients. Much like uh, human food, the biggest main ingredient comes first and it decreases all the way down. So as we can see here in the Tetra brand, we've got fish meal, wheat germ meal, wheat flour, corn gluten, feeding oat, dehaled soybean meal, potato protein, and then shrimp meal and dried yeast. That does not sound particularly good when it comes to um, feeding our fish. Uh, the nutritional breakdown comes at 63.3% protein rest filler as well, so just to give you an idea on that. Uh, the insect here, main ingredient is um, insect larvae, then wheat gluten, wheat flour, wheat germ and brewer's yeast, then follow that with some um, algae. And then the NLS, uh, we've got five different sorts of insects, and then it comes through to wheat flour, um, some oil and some seaweed and stuff like that. So, like I said before, the sera insects got a really high protein base, but very quickly it comes in with the, your fillers, whereas the NLS um, insectrum has a high quantity of insect but then it fills out really quickly with fillers as well so although it's got five uh, insects straight away it doesn't take very long for the rest of the products to be filled up with fillers whereas the majority of this the 40 percent of it is the insects before it gets filled with anything else so overall i'd go with the sera insect being a higher pro product than the insectrum purely based on the way the nutritionals break down as well as the insect has broken down so it's really hard to quantify if a fish food is really helping a fish live longer uh, because there's so many parameters go with it. So everything is kind of antidotal evidence. Uh, I can say from my experience, when we feed our fish that are coming into this building, coming into our facility with live foods, which we didn't really talk about, um, Rapashi, again, we didn't really talk about, it, but foods that are full, of, are full of insect base, they seem to do a lot better, they settle a lot quicker and they seem to calm down and have less uh, disease and issues that come through them. I know very antidotal, 
but that is just my experience that I've found compared to feeding out cheap, um, cheap flakes and cheap pellets and that sort of stuff. So that's just a general look of like a breakdown for a general generic sort of staple food. Uh, I prefer a crumble over a flake, that's the way we're looking at the crumbles and the pellets more than the flakes. But the same thing applies to the flakes as well. But yeah, that would be your general generic stuff. You can feed to your mid-feeding um, mid fish. Uh, a lot of it will go to the bottom for your bottom dollars as well. The equation changes slightly when you get into your algae-based foods for your plecos and that sort of thing. So we'll touch on that now as well. So when you're looking to feed your more herbivorous catfish and ancestors on that kind of thing, um, it's a very similar thing. Your protein base is still the same, but you're wanting your ingredients to have more plant protein or algae protein first. So like with this um, fish science here, we've got plant protein as our first one. Unfortunately, with the Sierra XSL catfish, our first ingredient here is fish meal, but it's got a really high spirulina count coming into your... Um, uh, Echo one stuff, fish meal, soybean meal, wheat meal, junk, go away. Uh, following through here, some more fish science, we've got a high number of algae, spirulina and kelp with 15%, which is fantastic as our main ingredients. And then through Hikari, we've got fish meal, wheat flour, wheat germ, uh, Casanova starch, dry bakery products, and I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I think of that one as well. So a common misconception is that herbivorous fish don't need protein or lots of protein. I think it needs to be looked at slightly differently because they do still require protein, it's just a different source of protein. So spirulina, for example, has a really high protein count in it for a, a green-based product, as opposed to a fish-based food, which is getting the fish proteins, which is pushing up the protein count that way. So although they definitely do need the protein, you just got to work out the way that they're getting it from. Now also take into account, uh, like plecos, for example, they're rasping at stuff all day long. So although they might be scratching off bits of algae, they might be scratching off bits of plant matter, they're also getting crustaceans and they're also getting little bits of protein from worms and that sort of stuff at the same time. So balancing that um, is the best option for your um, more omnivorous and your herbivorous fish. So when it comes to things like corridorals and loaches and stuff like that, they're rooting around in the substrate, they're looking for crustaceans, they're looking for worms, all that kind of good stuff. So we're trying to base our foods around that as well. So as we can see on this fish science product, we've got worm meal, herring meal, cereals, uh, yeast, potato minerals, algae and whatnot. Uh, this boasts over 40% worm content, which is cool. We've got crustaceans in through uh, the JBL product, uh, mollusks, cereals, fish byproducts. Uh, and through here, insect meal, yeasts, uh, wheat flowers, spirulinas, and then through the cereal product, uh, we've got fish meal, sea algae, milk powder, wheat flour, and stuff like that. So um, I don't feel any of these are any super better than each other. Personally, I really like the Fish Science Corridor tablet because I know um, how it was designed. Uh, the people that designed it were really experts in their field, so I think that gives it that edge up over the rest of them. But as you can see here, they're all very, very similar based products. Overall, I don't actually think there is one absolutely immaculate standout food that is better than everything, that is perfectly balanced, that has got the perfect ingredients. Every product has its ups and downs. Every product has fillers in it. It's unavoidable. Um, I think as long as we're trying to get as much insect-based product in as we can as possible, much algae-based or spirulina-based product in as we can as much as possible, uh, things like that is what we're really looking for as opposed to fish-based, uh, potatoes, gluten, all that kind of gross stuff as well. So um, use this information as you will. Um, hopefully there's a few people that watch this video that will comment and challenge me a little bit or agree with me, uh, preferably challenges. I like that. I like learning. Um, there's at least one or two of you that I know that I'm hoping will leave a comment in the uh, comment section and again challenge me because that's how you learn. Other than that, uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this and hopefully helped this make you make your decision when feeding your fish that little bit easier. It gives you a few more bits and pieces to look at that's not just uh, this is this much, this has got this much protein, this has got this ingredients in it. It's kind of balancing through a little bit more as well. So hope you have a good one team. Happy fish keeping. Catch you later.